Hello everybody and welcome to this loadout video for the R90 shotgun for my weapon tactics series. We're just going to jump right into it and talk about my favorite setups for the R90. They're pretty straightforward. So we'll start with the shotgun itself. Uh, I have a armory configuration that I call double pump for obvious reasons. Um, this has the choke, forge tack, sentry barrel, sleight of hand perk, stippled grip tape, for the rear grip and the Merc foregrip. Now, in general, what I'm trying to do with the R90 is maximize the range of what it can kill. So, a shotgun is a close range weapon, obviously, but we're still going to try and maximize that potential by increasing its range as much as possible. That's what I prefer to do in Modern Warfare. So, the choke is. Oh, okay, great. Thank you for Gunsmith Customs. Uh, the choke uh, gives us tighter pellet spread and, and increased damage range, which is going to make the shotgun less forgiving, but you're really not going to notice that in the uses that you have for this shotgun. What it really does is keeps pellets closer to the center of your reticle so that even as you're hip firing, which is what I recommend with this gun, you are going to get that noticeable extra amount of range. The Forge Tack Sentry Barrel, again, increases damage range and adds a tighter pellet spread. The Gemini does the opposite, which is kind of, I don't know, I didn't even mess around with it. I don't, I don't think it really lends itself well to what we're trying to do with this shotgun here. The Merc foregrip, recoil control and aim down sight speed. I'm not really worried much about um, either of these, but the recoil control is nice, especially since we are always, if you saw my engagements video for this, always going to fire both barrels every time we cycle this shotgun. So. Um, Compared with aim down sight speed, aiming stability, or nothing else, I'll take the extra aim down sight speed in those rare instances when you do want to get that little bit of extra range. Uh, ammunition, we've got an increased ammo capacity, which, you know, the extra four rounds take this from 14 rounds to 18 rounds. That's really not necessary for what you're doing with this shotgun, especially not for losing movement speed. You want to stay mobile with this weapon. And then the slug rounds increase damage range, but not the way that it does with the choke where it decreases pellet spread. This then becomes a single projectile weapon, which makes it much more demanding on how you're going to have to hit people, so uh, I wouldn't recommend that. The stippled grip tape increases aim down sp sight speed, but more importantly, sprint to fire speed as we're sprinting around the map. This allows us to more quickly come out of sprint and start blasting, which is important for getting up close. Uh, again, we don't really need recoil control much here. And the reason I use sleight of hand uh, perk here is that, again, one of the weaknesses of this weapon, even though it has a large magazine capacity, it does take a while to reload 14 rounds into the shotgun. Sleight of hand helps with that. Um, and I don't ever run optics on shotguns, so that is a perk that's kind of, or an attachment that's kind of wasted on me. The laser isn't really necessary. You could run a one milliwatt laser if you wanted to, but like I said, I don't, I don't find it to be necessary. These extra pumps, they don't they don't really do anything useful. I'm not even entirely sure what they're here for this shotgun. You're not you're not trying to snipe with this shotgun, so I I mean I guess some of these other attachments make a lot more sense if you're running slugs and you treat this basically as a double barreled rifle. Um, short of that, the sleight of hand perk is my go-to perk for this over anything else. Um, just because in you know, when you do want to top up that magazine or reload it all the way, it's nice for it to go quicker. Um, I will quickly cover my second loadout for this, which is basically the exact same loadout, but what we've done is we've switched out the choke for the monolithic suppressor. And the monolithic suppressor also increases damage range, like the choke. So if you see the, the difference here, um, the choke does have slightly increased range because of that tighter pellet spread, but the monolithic suppressor makes it silent, so you'll stay off the radar. So, so it's a... That's really the only trade out for the two main ways that I would use, that I use weapons in general, is a suppressed and an unsuppressed version. If you're going to be sneakier with this and try to stay off the radar, the suppressor is a must. So in this case, the monolithic is better because it helps us maintain as much of that damage range as possible. So those are the core of, of how I would configure this shotgun. Um, Real briefly, my kits haven't really changed from how I do them in the past, but there is something, if you've seen the engagement video, that is important to recognize about um, 
my R90 loadout, and that is the proximity mine. I feel like with the R90, this is, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a must, but it is such a complementary piece of lethal equipment with the fact that you're focusing on close range engagements and you will, if you play this weapon right, be alive for a significant amount of time. The proximity mines really allow you to defend objectives much more effectively, lock down an entire area, and just kind of randomly get kills when when you're off clearing off another part of the map. I feel like this, in this kit, the proximity mine is more of a full force multiplier, meaning instead of like most people would use a proximity mine guarding their backs while they're in a camping position, which means that it's basically just trying to protect someone from sneaking up on them. When I say I use this as a full force multiplier, what I mean is this is acting as almost a second player, and it can be on the other side of the map getting a kill for you while you're off defending another objective. You can leave with, as you'll see in my objective class, with the shrapnel perk, which gives you an extra piece of lethal equipment, with two proximity mines guarding one flag, maybe two entrances to one flag, and then you, like say you leave two proxy mines on A, and then you go and guard B, you by yourself can pretty effectively lock down two points for a decent amount of time. So that's why I just, even on my stealth kit, the proximity mines, just leaving them behind as you're moving across the map, it's just so useful. I, I can't emphasize it enough. Um, quick fix is uh, uh, a good perk one to use with this because, I mean, another alternative you might want to go with would be double time. You don't need scavenger for this. Um, the reason I go with quick fix is because you're going to be engaging at close range, so you will get shot. You will win most of these close range battles, but you are going to take damage in the process. So quick fix makes it so that after you kill someone, your health regen starts immediately, which is very useful for shotguns in general, but especially the R90. I still run Ghost uh, as a perk too, I just find it to be the most useful. Um, just for moving around the map, you know, maybe... I, I said in my engagement video, I don't recommend overkill with the R90. It's really good at, it, at what it does, but if you want to use it as a secondary weapon, overkill would basically, I feel like, drop the R90 down into a secondary weapon slot. And then Battle Hardened is kind of personal preference. Shrapnel gives me the extra lethal. Battle Hardened helps me not get uh, affected as much by stun grenades and flash grenades, especially when people know that I'm guarding a close range area. They'll probably lead with those, so... Um, and then actually... I have, as I mentioned before, I have previously, I have now switched to stun grenades for my custom kits because they just, flash grenades I just found to be uh, not as effective as I originally thought they were going to be. So that's my assault kit, my objective kit, uh, just swaps out a uh, quick fix for EOD because you're going to be capturing objectives, so being a more resistant against explosives is important. Still want those two proximity mines and the smoke grenade for objectives. For the stealth kit, cold-blooded then becomes a must. The whole idea of this kit is to stay off the radar all the time. Cold-blooded and Ghost does that. What Tune-Up does is uh, gives me quicker access to dead silence, so this just complements my entire sneaky sneaky kit. Um, and then the proxies and stun grenades. My Wheezy kit is basically just, if I was going to throw this shotgun on and play with it, to be as effective as it possibly could be, what would I choose? And it's a mix between my, my stealth kit and my assault kit, which is to say it's the suppressed version of the R90, but I'm going to trade out cold-blooded for quick fix, and instead of tune-up, I'm going to use shrapnel. So what I've got here is a shotgun that as soon as you kill someone is going to restart your health generation, two proximity mines, and ghost. So this is going to be a, an excellent way to be very versatile. It's a great slayer setup, but it's also great for defending objectives. So that's what I would go with. The Those are the more the four main kits here that I would uh, recommend you use. And as I was playing with the R90, these are the ones that I found to be the most effective. And um, yeah, hopefully uh, you've seen the engagement video to go along with this. If not, go check that out now. And I hope you enjoyed this. And Look forward to uh, more of these weapon tactics videos from me, and also check out my previous weapon tactics videos. So, uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, subscribe and like the video if you guys want more of this, and I will talk to you later.